Hey guys, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I, I don't have anything to hang up on my lure board. So maybe we'll just hang this block of balsa, sort of symbolic of the next lure we're gonna make. But this week I'm gonna test some really cool stuff. I got two lithium batteries that the manufacturer claims will crank motors which is a huge game changer because that means you don't have to have a mix of batteries on your boat. You can have your cranking battery and your trolling motor batteries and your house bank batteries. All those batteries be lithium. I mean, if you want batteries that last a long time are much lighter, uh, they'll go through a million cycles. Can You can cycle them down to almost zero without damaging them. All those positives about lithium and be able to crank a motor, I don't know. I haven't tried them. We'll try them on a few different size motors, see what happens. So I've got two batteries, one from Watt Cycle, and you can see I haven't really even taken it out of the box yet. I did open it up so I could get it charged. And I got another one from Lee Time. And if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that Lee Time has offered me a lot of good batteries that I've tested and I am personally using them in my boats right now. I've got two in my converted little John boat. I've got three in my sailboat and I've got two for my trolling motor on my flats boat. Now I have been charging them and this one is completely full and I've got the watt cycle on here charging as well. It's already pretty close to being charged up. I'm going to give it a little more and when it says full we'll get started. All right we're out here behind the shop and we're going to start off with these two guys and this riding mower we got a two-cylinder motor in this diesel tractor we've got a three-cylinder motor and over here we've got a four-cylinder four-stroke 115 horsepower outboard now the big question i had was how are those 100 amp hour batteries gonna generate the amperage it takes to crank up something like this because we all know when we go out shopping for a good marine battery we're looking at cranking amps cold cranking amps marine cranking amps all ranging above 800 900 1200 so it's a little bit weird that they can actually generate cranking amps from a battery that typically can't produce more than 100 amps sustained without sort of shutting itself down. Now looking at the paperwork on the lead time batteries, this is actually a 140 amp hour battery and it claims to be able to generate 1200 marine cranking amps or 900 cold cranking amps. That's about as good as a decent quality marine battery, lead acid battery can do. And besides being also Bluetooth accessible, the lead time battery also has a really neat feature. It's a power reserve. This guarantees you'll always be able to crank up your outboard at the end of the day. Neither one of these batteries are designed to be automotive battery. So I don't think you can take one of these things and put it in your car, probably shouldn't. But for a boat with an outboard or even an inboard, and like my little sailboat that I have a little diesel and in fact, that sailboat has exactly the same motor that this thing has. It's just been changed for marine use. It's got a three cylinder, 17 horsepower motor in it. And if you know anything about diesels, you know that it's all about compression. So they're difficult to crank. In fact, the battery in this thing, I have to keep on a trickle charger all the time. All right, it's turned itself off. Battery's charged up. Let's start testing these things. All right, as far as the, uh, the appearance, and weight and everything of these batteries they're about the same the only thing I, I really like a little better of the watt cycle is that it has the standard lugs here they are threaded on the top so you can still put in bolts and eye terminals on it and it also has this button right here which is kind of a last chance button so when the battery gets so low it turns itself off but you need one last burst to start the motor you can push this button and hopefully it'll work now this watt cycle battery is a dual purpose battery. So it'll crank and be your general purpose battery too. It's 100 amp hours. It's self heating and it's Bluetooth accessible. And it shows here that it's got 1200 cold cranking amps for starting motors. All right, I wanna start off with the smallest motor first. This is a 24 horsepower, two cylinder, 724 cc motor. And while it has quite a few hours on it, it I've maintained it really well. So it cranks pretty easily. And so that there's no weirdness about how I'm hooking this up, I'm just gonna disconnect this battery and connect the lithium batteries through some jumpers. This way, you don't have to worry that I might be connecting two batteries. And we'll just put the battery right here. This is the negative terminal. And here's our positive terminal. 
and let's see if it cranks up. Seems to be cranking it pretty good. All right, it cranked it. I didn't feel like it had a whole lot of juice. Let's try the lead time. Positive terminal, negative terminal. You know, I really didn't hear much of a difference. I was expecting it to really crank it fast. At this point, I was thinking that maybe those jumper cables really weren't up to snuff and I needed to connect directly. So I decided to go ahead and pull this battery completely out and connect it directly to the terminals in the tractor. And I'll pull the face plate off just so it's clear to everybody what I'm doing. I've got a feeling that uh, jumper cable just isn't giving us a good connection. So I'm gonna try to connect straight in here. All right, that should be good. All right, that could be, that should be good and snug. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, like a champ. That's better than the original battery. All right, let's try the lead time. Wow, I'm, I'm totally impressed. Because this little motor is a diesel, obviously, and diesels really need a bit of power to turn them over because they, they rely on compression for the combustion. And this particular motor is, has been, always been a little bit finicky as far as the, uh, the key start circuit. It's always given me a little bit of trouble, but man, that thing popped it right off. Let's go ahead and put the other one on. We're gonna have to get a little creative because the other one has the uh, bolt terminals. All right, so here are the connections I've made. This is the original positive terminal to the motor. And then on the negative side, I put a jumper to this terminal right to the bolt. And I'm hoping that's gonna be sufficient and it's gonna be a fair comparison. Let's go ahead and see how it cranks. Like a champ. Wow, a little bit of smoke. She's an old girl. <laughs> I can't believe that. That's so much better than my other battery. Fantastic. Time to crank the Yamaha outboard. All right, and we'll put a little bit of water on because you gotta have water whenever you crank your motor. Never crank your motor without water on. It's not about not overheating. It's about not destroying your water pump because the only thing that lubricates that thing is water. These bigger batteries are going to be difficult to fit in there. So I got the old battery out of there for sure. And then have barely had the space to squeeze this thing in here. We're starting off with the lead time battery. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'll be surprised if it doesn't work because with the claims of the high cranking amps that it has in the manual, it should be able to crank this motor. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah. All right, now I'm super curious about whether that watt cycle battery is gonna work in the same kind of arrangement. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. All right, that's nicely installed. Let's see what happens when I crank it. Let's get the water back on. Here we go. Wow, I am shocked. It cranked it really well. These, both of these batteries crank really well because this Yamaha doesn't like to be cranked slowly. It likes to really get revved. All right, some thinking to do now. 140 amp hours or just 100? I gotta think about this. So I gotta wrap my head around this. Um, this obviously, um, to me anyway, had the greater cranking power, but it is a bigger battery. It's 140 amp hours, this is only 100 amp hour. I do like those standard terminals on this battery. As far as cranking motors, 
I think they do a killer job. Now, e neither one of them is really meant to be in a car. So do not put this in your car. But that's because the charging system in your car is very different. And these aren't really meant to be charged directly from an automotive uh, alternator. So don't put them in your cars. And if you're concerned about the alternator in your boat, you can put a little alternator saver. Uh, it's a small device that uh, keeps a constant load on the alternator. Or you can just do what I do and just have a small lead acid battery in the circuit just to keep things from getting any more complicated. This has 40% greater power, but it also feels about 40% heavier. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, if, if all you have is a small outboard, the, uh, the watt cycle will do you just fine. And if you want to be able to do more than just crank and have some operating amp hours, uh, this thing really will give you a lot of juice for the money, I think. And before you guys go off talking about the end of the world because of lithium, you have to remember the formulations have really changed. This is lithium iron phosphate and not lithium ion phosphate. The two are very different and how they react to heat and amperage overruns and all that kind of stuff is very different. These things are really stable. If something happened, you short them completely, all they do is smoke and get ruined. And I can tell you that from my own experience, I was actually building a 200 amp hour, 24 volt bank of cells and I screwed up and shorted one out and it just melted the stud right out of the cell. And it happened in an instant. It scared the hell out of me, but definitely don't do that. <laughs> but it didn't blow up the house and take it didn't burn down the neighborhood or anything. So don't worry, these things are really safe. They're at least as safe as lead acid. And, I, and my plan is to have this be my cranking battery on the diesel on my sailboat. I think it'll do a fine job. And in a pinch, I've got some extra amp hours that I can utilize for instruments and the microwave and a blender and whatever else I want to do when I'm on anchor. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We're going to get back to lure making real soon.